Hi, and welcome to this episode of the Brand Warrior Revolution podcast with Chantal and Marilee. So today we are going to explore a technique that we've used extensively in our team as well as with our clients. And, you know, this time of the year is a is a busy, busy time. I don't know about you, Marilee, but it feels to me like we, we've lost three months. It feels like it still it should be August or July. And um, we've got projects to wrap up. We've got calendars that are booked up until the middle of December. And sometimes this time of the year is so busy that we don't pause and breathe and just look back at the year uh, for the purpose of celebrating, but also for the purpose of learning. So what Mm. Marley and I wanted to just jam about today and, and discuss is the power of retrospectives and doing Uh, We want to give you some practical tips so that you can do a a retrospective with your team and tap into the wisdom of the learnings of 2021 before you go into 2022. So, Marley, your thoughts on, you know, maybe you can share just, you know, how how we've used this and, 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 you know, what your what your experience with the retrospective has been. Yeah, so so we use a, a model that we love, um, and and uh, and it's so powerful because I think it brings in all the voices in the room. Um, so it's it's very cool to go and sit down and think about the work that you've done on your own, but to get the voices of the full team in, and sometimes even the client's voice into the room. Um, that that is fantastic, and we use something called the retrospective <laughs> model. And, and it's got four quadrants, so it's, it's very simplistic. It's the four L's of what did you love, what did you love, what did you really not like, <laughs> what did you learn, and what did you long for? And, and, uh, and out of that, um, we put it all together and we give everybody a chance to talk through. Um, we, we use post-it notes, but you can use, you can use it on a, on a flip board or if you on a mirror board, um, depending on if, you, if you're online or offline. Um, it is a very effective, fast way to get a lot of voices in, in the room on one spot and, and one place. And then you can take it from there. So um, a lovely, lovely model to use, actually. So, Marley, I remember the first time that we did this, I met uh, Dominic Price from Atlassian in San Diego at a conference, and he really introduced me to this this model. And I can remember I couldn't wait to get back to the team and show them this 4L, 4L model. And as a leader, you know, some of my initial reservations were, oh, my gosh, if I ask my team what did they loathe and what did they long for, and they honest, would I be able to take it as a leader? Like, like when we put those post-it notes up, I was like, uh, am I going to, is my, is my skin going to be thick enough to, to handle this? And I think it was, you know, for me, it was like really a deep connection that we had mm. in that first meeting where we, where we did this. And, and subsequently when we did it with clients, I think just, you know, each person just having, you know, a unadulterated like time just to think about these things mm. and then share it openly and the alignment that happens in knowing deeper and, and almost developing empathy in this process to say, well, let's look at, you know, what we love together. What are some of the overlaps? What are the things that I didn't know about my colleagues? Mm. And then what I loathed, especially that quadrant gives me deep insight into you know how we can do how we can do things differently, and and if mm. there's more loads than loves, you know that your team's not not going to be in a healthy state, right? Yeah, and and also on that, I mean, Chantal, if you as a leader opens up uh, this model to to the team, it it allows them and um, and gives them permission. You you gave us permission to be truthful and and to be honest and open and, and say, you know, a project is not always fantastic. There's not just loves. There's always some room for improvement, and and if we if we look at the lows and the longs for as opportunities rather as um, it, it should be a guilt-free zone, you know, it's not it's not a shaming or a blaming space. It is a, it's a place of growth, and I think if you position it in that way, then then people you give them permission and you create a safe space for people just to to say it as it is because they're already thinking it. 
and, and they're feeling it. Um, so why not voice it? Um, so if we can create spaces for people where they feel safe and part of, it's like suddenly if I put on the loaf um, box, I say something and somebody else also said that um, there's, there's also this, oh, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. Um, you know, I'm not the only the only one that feels this way. So, so, so it also creates a space where, where people can connect, as you say, and, and with, with a bit of empathy and, and connection. Um, yeah, so I think that's amazing. And what was fairly easy for us as a team and subsequently in doing that with clients is, is once the post-it notes land on the board, you look at the love quadrant and you go, let's celebrate the stuff that we mm. loved, you know, and then looking at the loathe quadrant is like, okay, what are we going to do about this? Because we can't go into next year loathing the same shit, right? Mm -hmm. Then we're not moving forward. So either we transform it or we look at, you know, the stuff that one person loathes, maybe another person's going to enjoy doing that work. How can we actually shuffle stuff around so that, people that you end up with mm. a nice balance i mean there'll always be stuff that we loathe doing exactly um but it's just getting that balance right and then i think in terms of long for also taking action to say all right so if we long for you know more connection in the team if we long for training or mentorship or whatever lands in that quadrant what can we do about that um and then celebrating some of the learnings because i think mm. often we each individually are on a growth path and sometimes we don't validate okay this is what i this is what i learned learned from some of these experiences and it's mm. a little bit of that you know shit to diamonds sometimes we go through tough <laughs> times and we go through challenges and those challenges are put there uh, in order for us to cho to choose the path of growth and to push through it and to you know conquer slay the dragons and you know get ourselves out of the out of the pit of despair yeah, I was just thinking now while you were talking is, is this thing about when people put stuff up on the board, then suddenly it's like, oh, yeah, I actually, I forgot about that. I actually also learned that. Or um, so, so I think the, the, the other thing about it is that it's a, it's a combined effort and, it's, and, and, and I might forget stuff because we, we may not do the retrospective right, right after a project. It might be like a couple of weeks later and then you forget. So, so I think the suggestion that, that I also um, want to make is do it rather sooner than later um, if you can. Because if you wait too long, life happens, and 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 then it that then it's not a priority, and and we need to we need to prioritize it because you can't get better if you don't look back. You have to almost go slow to go fast, right? What's that saying? Go go slow to go fast. So so it almost feels like, oh, but it's just another meeting, and it's it's a waste of time to like spend time on a retrospective. But it's actually not. It's actually gonna it's gonna make the the next one faster and better. Um, and 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 more um, cohesive. So so I think I think that's the power of feedback and and being open to that. Yeah. Absolutely, and and I think Marley, just to reiterate your your sentiments around how you can use this. So I mean, you can use this in for a project. Um, mm. You can use this for a specific timeline. So like, let's do a retrospective on the last quarter of what happened inside the company. Um, and, and also, I think in an individual capacity to use it for your role. One of the things that I'm going to mm. go into uh, into with the brand love with the brand love team is obviously a, a review of the year, a, a review of how people, you know, how comfortable they are in their roles. How do they see their own performance? And I think in an individual capacity, looking at, you know, the role that you're in, what did you love about the role? Mm. What did you loathe about the role? What did you long for in your role? And what did you learn um, in your role and using that almost to transform people's roles to the to the next level of of performance and to the next level of growth where they where they move into into mastery of both the you know the technical aspects of the role but also the 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 emotional um, demands that a, that a role might have and stepping mm. into into a position of leadership so I just think this is a magical tool all around for teams for you know large organizations and to surface some of the unspoken things some yeah. of the some of the missed assumptions, some of the missed expectations, and and to empower teams to have better agreements going into 
a new period or a new project. Yeah, it gives clarity. And, and, and um, I'm just thinking, you know, it's, it's such a good feedback model. And, and when we do work with, with teams, so, you know, we ask them, so, so if, we, if we say to you, if we say feedback, what's well, like the first word that comes to mind? And, and usually it's anxious or stressed or, you know, it's like, it, it's mostly negative. There's some positive <laughs> words that come through, but, but mostly when people say or hear the word feedback, suddenly it's like, oh, it's this, it's this big thing. And, and I think what, what we found is we've normalized this. So, so when we say we're going to do a retrospective, everybody knows exactly what it means. Um, we know exactly what we want to do with it. And, and so, so I think it gives um, a clear direction. It gives, gives clarity. It takes that stress and anxiousness out of, out of this uh, like word in inverted commas feedback. And, and, it, and it makes it part of just like our way of being and doing. And, and, uh, and, and I wish that for more people, because I think a lot of people, um, feedback should not be a negative thing. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is actually such a gift. And, uh, and uh, if we can just get people to, to use it a little bit more as a gift, rather than a, than a place of shaming and blaming and, and or, or, or having to protect themselves. Um, if we can create safe environments for people to do that, 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 that I think will make my heart light. <laughs> well, yeah, I and I, I mean, Marley, I, 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 you know, I look at, you know, some of the experiences we've had with, you know, ourselves as a team and with our clients where we've got, you know, executives and CEOs sitting in this retrospective session and they, you know, I can see they have the same reaction as my first reaction to saying, oh, loathe, loathe is quite a strong word. Can we call yeah. it something else, you know? And I think once the notes are up on the board, they look at that and they go, why didn't you tell me earlier? That's so easy to change. Mm -hmm. But I think people walk around with some of these things inside of them. They never voice it. Everybody's frustrated with the same thing. Mm. The CEO doesn't know. So we're actually disempowering our leaders to help us if we don't tell them, you know, what did we long for and what did we learn? I think that's one of the things that, you know, in business school and in, you know, pretty much any, any form of tertiary education, they never teach you how to negotiate your needs, how to mm -hmm. make sure that you set clear expectations. And, and this for me is a, a, a great model where, you know, as a leader, I'm empowered to help my team. I'm empowered to, you know, un, unblock certain things that, that stands in their way of, of achieving what they, what they, what they want to achieve. And I, I mean, as a, as a, you know, service provider to clients, you know, we run a lot of transform, transformation projects, strategic initiatives. This is as well, if you're in the service business, this is such a great way to get feedback from your clients, mm. you know, to say to our big clients, okay, we're going to do a retrospective on, you know, brand loves engagement with you this year, brand loves delivery to you this year. You know, what did you love? What did you loathe? What did you long for? And what did you learn? And you almost go into a new, you know, service level agreement discussion, but in a very different way to say, all right, so the things you loathed, what can we do about that? You know, how can we better satisfy your needs? How can we make sure that we um, we take some of these these challenges and, and we transform them into something else? Yeah, and, and what it also does or allows for is if you say to a client, uh, please will you just give us some feedback on the project or whatever, um, it's very vague, right? So, so they, they, they don't even know, they might not even know where to start. So I think we also give them the opportunity to, to go and think a little bit deeper and, and, and think about the positive and the negative and, and not just feel that they need to say certain things. So we, we almost invite them to, to go a little bit deeper. And, and so it's, it's again, the giving people structure helps them to think. It's a thinking tool as well, um, because it gives them a little bit of guidelines or guardrails in terms of where, where they can go. And I, and I do think we speak to a different part of the brain when we say, yeah. what did you love and what did you loathe? It's not, you know, it's not getting stuck on this 
analytical mumbo jumbo right. of, you know, project updates need to be more regular. Maybe they need to be more regular. But if someone says, what did I loathe? I loathe not knowing what's going on, you know, yeah. rather than saying we need project updates every two weeks. If, if, if me as a service provider, if I know that my client is in the dark and they're feeling uncertain and they, they hate their CEO asking them, you know, where are you with this project? then my motivation to satisfy that need is going to be so, so much better. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to want to solve that problem for them rather than, you know, them beating with the stick saying, you know, project updates are not on time. We need it every two weeks. You know, then it's the why behind why, why, why we do what we do, why we have project governance in place is so that no one ever has to feel um, not confident or no one ever has to feel like they don't have the information to justify what's, what's happening. So I do, mm. I mean, I want to say, you know, Atlassian, thanks Dom Price for sharing this model because it's transformed the way we work. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's allowed us to really go to the heart of what what we need from each other as a team and, and what our clients need from us and what our clients need from their teams. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Thank you, Atlassian. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Atlassian. All right, Tamarali, let's just quickly, I mean, let's just finish this um, podcast with a bit, little bit of sharing. Just, you know, if you look at, um, yeah, just at the year, behind us 2021 it's it's almost unbelievable we've you know we you know at the, at the start of every year we we put our objectives down and we make some predictions about the year but now we're sitting november 2021 we're on the verge it Amazing. will be 2022 in what four five six seven weeks seven, seven weeks, weeks yeah. yeah seven weeks Crazy. it's it's a done deal so so mm -hmm. let us quickly run through the the four owls so what <laughs> did you love this year oh wow i loved connecting with so many people um even if it was online connections i mean we got to speak to how many people did you have world. through your training programs? Like what? Like I don't know. What five hundred? A thousand? Like five, five, six hundred? Yeah, possibly yeah. six hundred people, I would say. And some of them one-on-one, -on -one, some big groups, um, some in Botswana, some here in Cape Town, some in Joburg, some. I mean, we even had like what? Russia, America, New York, Norway, Amsterdam, Norway, Crazy. Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. South America, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's almost like meeting so many, I think this year opened up for us as Brand Love, so many opportunities to meet and, and um, touch so many more lives. Um, so, so even though our business had to be transformed, um, it brought with it such gifts and beauty as well. So, so, so I truly love that. And uh, yeah. That's the big thing. I think, and you, Chantal? I think, yeah, I think my, what I loved about this year was almost getting over the initial shock of COVID and mm. finding just confidence in the way we work and just being able to solve problems at such such larger scale and mm. touching people's lives at such larger scale. And these, you know, we've kind of pushed through that initial learning curve and just I've, I've loved the, you know, running running our workshops and our skills fest. It's it's been just wonderful being like masters at the tech and masters at the facilitation style and just knowing that people are loving it. I think yeah. that's I'm a junkie for people loving stuff and enjoying themselves. Amazing. All right. So let's look at loathe. What did you loathe? Uh, can I say what I loathe? Can I be yes, truthful? Yes, yes. No, you can just be oh. real. This is real. This is real from the heart. Tell me what you, you loathe and why. The, the biggest, <laughs> you know what's going to come. The biggest, <laughs> the biggest loathe potentially for me, not potentially, the biggest loathe, like just let's put it out there, is cameras off on Zoom meetings. I mean, as a facilitator, it is crazy not to see somebody's facial expression. If they, at least if I see them, I know that they hate it or they love it or they are there or they're not there, but not to see and only see these black little boxes 
that's like my pet hate. That's like that's that taps all my energy, and uh, and and yeah, and and we really have tried many many <laughs> different ways and creative ways to every get people to every switch angle. On. But I mean, but, Miley, that oh, that speaks God. to your deep love of people, right? It speaks to your deep oh. love of people and 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 the 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 level of connection you want and i, I mean mm. I, I have to i have to i have to echo echo that as as, as my oh. loathe and i think you know the thing is you know being so loving and accepting and and you know whether someone's in their onesie or whether they've got spinach in their we teeth or whether their flies open <laughs> don't just don't care we just want to see you and we yeah. want to see that inkling of a shiny eye and mm. and you know i think i think these video platforms are getting so smart about hiding ourselves i think some of that seeing yourself the whole time yeah. is you know something that you know just switch your camera feed off so you don't see yourself like just go hide self view exactly. And yeah. make sure you don't do something dumb on on camera, right? Otherwise, yeah. that's scratching your nose or <laughs> cutting your makeup, your nose, or cleaning your teeth, and spinach in your teeth. All right, yeah. so let's move on to the, um, you know, what did you, what did you long for? Oh, I long for hugs. I miss, <laughs> <laughs> I miss the physical contact. I mean, I think as a as a team, I miss the team. We all sitting all over the place, um, so, so I long for like seeing. I, I, to be quite honest, we've got people in our team that I've never met in person ever in my yeah. life. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. and oh, uh, actually, and, the and, majority <laughs> of the team is now people I we've know. never met in person. Yeah, I know. So, so I long for like just a, a, a physical hello oh this is what you actually look like not just your face and your your, your the, the top of your body um, i would love to see full people and be able to hug and high five or yeah just just connect on a personal level i think i i, I long for that and i also long for um for people to not um <sighs> in corporate in corporate environments to to be able to say no more and put boundaries in place because I see I see the impact on people and, and on their mental health and, and on, on people working till 10 at night, um, you know, sending out emails at 11 or three o'clock in the morning. And, and it's like, it's crazy. So, so I just wish and, and my, my long, longing is for people to, to look after themselves a little bit because it feels like there's a disconnect and, a, and an imbalance. So, so that's, that's the other thing. Um, big thing for me at the moment. And you? Yeah, I think, so, I mean, we used to have a lot of, like, adventures and spontaneity mm. and, you know, let's quickly go and have lunch or let's drive somewhere and go and buy something or <laughs> it, it's like it's like that incredible spontaneity. And, I mean, we did some crazy, crazy things, you know. Sometimes we just, like, we had no plan, but we would just, I don't know, yeah. drive somewhere. So I'm, I miss that spontaneity. And I think now that we've got a distributed team, it's a little bit more difficult to say, hey, everyone, let's go yeah. and have coffee. Or, you yeah. know, so I think that, um, and and I'm sure, you know, we'll we'll find what, and I think some of the things we've done this year was just incredible. Our, our haunted house experience and, you know, some of <laughs> yes. our stuff has been awesome. But it, that level of spontaneity where, you know, you go walk into the office and you say, okay, tools down, everyone, let's do X. Let's mm. go and have a burger or so I, th I think you know <laughs> <laughs> chippies 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 from the food truck <laughs> yeah mm. so um, but I, I'm sure we'll find I'm sure we'll find ways to do that and then last one what did you learn this year what was your oh. you know your biggest insight your biggest like mind-blowing gee I'm so glad I know this I you know yeah. I would be a I would be a poorer person if I didn't know this sure I think there's many but um I think what I've learned is that everybody is human um, and, and that everybody actually just want to be a good human being and, and they don't always know how to. And, and people long for connection and people long for laughter and people long for just um, realness um, because it, it feels like it's more important than ever. So, so that that's the, the big thing I think I've I've learned. I, I've known. I mean, I I know this, 
but but I think it was reconfirmed again this year. Um, yeah. And also with us doing online facilitation now, I've learned the power of props and production <laughs> <laughs> and laughing at ourselves um, and giving people permission to just like be bad as crazy it's fine you know and to dance even if you can't dance so I've learned to dance a little bit <laughs> amazing and you do uh, and you do a really good job I mean oh, we still feel well. uncomfortable but it's a lot it's, it's a it's lot a it's a lot better, better. right <laughs> and you, right and you don't do it and you don't do it for yourself you do it for the audience right yeah, exactly yeah, exactly absolutely Giving them permission. What about sure, you? Marley, I think I think one of my biggest biggest learnings probably this year and a little bit harder personal one was around burnout Mm. um and around you know being being having a real addiction to work um Mm. and and understanding some of the underlying reasons of that is that you know some of my aspects of life I, I just wasn't coping well with um and that's why you know I move work is my is my place where I I know I know what I'm worth I know what I bring to this world and I love what I do and sometimes that can become a hiding place because the other areas of my life I feel I'm slightly underperforming so that was a big that was a big like epiphany Mm -hmm. aha moment got me into the bottom of the pit of despair and I think just you know, just a huge gratitude for all the mentors that, you know, that really helped me navigate a difficult time. Mm. And, you know, the love of, you know, colleagues, my colleagues, you, um, Johan, the rest of the brand mm. love team, just holding me with so much love and understanding and empathy. And, you know, the real skills, like how to, how to navigate, how to say no, mm-hmm. how to really prioritize the things that's really, really important because everything is important in my life, right? And I want to mm-hmm. say yes yeah. to everyone and I want to do everything and I have constant FOMO if I'm not everywhere um, and really being like clear about this is this is what I want and you know if something doesn't fit into that paradigm you know how to tell someone with a lot of respect and a lot of love and a lot of empathy that you know at this time I just I just can't do that Mm. so that that was a big you know I think in terms of (laughs) a lot of learnings this was probably 2021 was a big Mm. was a big a big the year presented me just with (laughs) An yeah. amazing opportunity <laughs> to get some shit out of the way, right? Oh, well. Kudos <laughs> and, um, to you, though. That's yeah, I know. Um, but, and I mean, I, at that crossroads, I knew like, okay, you got to better, better pay attention now. This is not going to go away. It's probably going to come back with a vengeance. And, you know, yeah. menopause, menopause leads to doing um, sometimes some crazy but courageous stuff. So, sure. yeah. Amazing. Kudos to you uh, that you took it on with so much... Um, you know, with so much empathy for yourself as well, um, because I think that's that's a, a hard thing. I think that's a hard thing for you, but it's a hard thing for most of us to do, right? Yeah, so. and maybe maybe my last piece of just guidance is like when when one's cup is empty, you can't even see, you know, your your own your own mm-hmm. issues, and you can't see how to navigate out of that. And, you know, one of the things, you know, my Qigong story and just my daily practices, mm. how I'm filling my cup so that I can solve problems better. Mm. Um, and I would say I, I'm, you know, I'm even I'm even better than than what I was before, although I'm doing a lot less and I'm moving a lot slower. I'm actually the quality of my problem solving has has become so much better. All right. Mm-hmm. So. That is a wrap for today. So listeners, I really want to recommend that you carve out time, do this retrospective personally on your role, uh, take it to your team, see what learnings you can unlock before the year's out. Do this retrospective before the year's out. And yeah, thank you for um, letting us tell our personal stories. And Marley, thank you very much for joining me today. And um, (laughs) I reckon this should just be the Marley and Chantal show, right? I hey, Miley, come on, you, while huh? I've got you here, like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Amazing, I mean. amazing, amazing, thank amazing. You. All right, thank me. you. Thank you, listeners, and watch out for the next episode of the Brand Warrior Revolution podcast.